Hi, everybody. Um, I did miss yesterday, Sunday, uh, January the 17th. So today is Monday, January the 18th, uh, 2021. So we're on uh, chapter five of Rediscover Jesus and uh, the God claim. The, ev the evidence is overwhelming and inspiring. More than any other person in history, Jesus had Jesus had clarity about his identity. He was born about, <laughs> would help to practice this, huh? God, Holy Spirit, come upon me. May I read clearly and say the words properly. Okay, let's try this again. The God claim. The evidence is overwhelming and inspiring. More than any other person in history, Jesus had clarity about his identity. He was clear about who he was and who he wasn't. Some wanted him to be a political leader or military revolutionary, but he refused. Others wanted him to be an economic savior, but he refused. Many tried to use him for their own personal gain, but he constantly evaded them. So perhaps it's worth exploring who Jesus thought he was by asking, what did Jesus say about himself? Directly and indirectly throughout the Gospels, Jesus said he was God. In the Gospels, he referred to himself as the Son of Man 80 times. It was his favorite name. What does it mean? What is the significance? The prophet Daniel wrote, <clears throat> As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the Ancient One and was presented before him, he received dominion, glory, and kingship. Nations and people of every language serve him. His dominion is everlasting that shall not be taken away from him. Kingship shall not be destroyed. His kingship shall not be destroyed. And that was found in Daniel chapter 7 verses 13 through 14. So when Jesus said, I am the son of man, he was saying, I am the one Daniel spoke about. I have dominion, glory, and kingship. Every nation will worship me. People of every language will serve me. My dominion is divine. Worldly dominion can, take, can be taken away, but my dominion is not worldly, and it cannot be taken from me. My kingship is divine. The kings of this world can be murdered and overthrown. Their kingship and kingdoms can be destroyed. But my kingship is inseparable from who I am. It cannot be taken or transferred to anybody else. I am the one you have been waiting for. When you and I read the passage today, much of the meaning may be lost on us, but it was not lost on the Jewish people of Jesus' time or the religious leaders. They were not confused about what Jesus was claiming. That's why they accused him of blasphemy. That's why they tried to stone him to death because that was the punishment for blasphemy. Jesus claimed to be God. When Jesus said, I am the son of man, he was speaking their language. They knew exactly what he was saying. He was saying to them, I am the Messiah. I am the rightful heir to the divine throne. Nations will worship me and I will rule forever. My kingdom is untouchable and unstoppable. I am the fulfillment of Daniel's vision. This is what Jesus had to say about himself. Over and over throughout the Gospels, he demonstrated his divinity with both his words and actions. He indirectly asserted his divinity in dozens of ways to help the people his, to help the people of his time connect the dots between what was go what was doing and saying and what the prophets had been saying about the long-awaited Messiah for thousands of years. Okay. <clears throat> Jesus demonstrated control over nature. So this is a scripture. Then he got up, rebuked the winds and, and the sea, and there was great calm. What sort, of, what sort of man is this whom even the winds and the sea obey? And that would be found in Matthew chapter 8, verses 26 through 27. 
When Jesus demonstrated his control over nature, it clearly signified his divinity. But we also see that even during his lifetime, people were grappling with the Jesus question when they asked, what sort of man is this? Jesus claimed he was able to forgive sins. He entered a boat, he entered a boat, made the crossing, and came into his own town. And there were, and people were, oh, okay, so this is going to be another scripture, guys. Then he entered a boat, made the crossing, and came into his own town. And there people brought him a paralytic lying on a stretcher. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Courage, child, your, son, your sins are forgiven. Jesus brings order to everything. The people were fo focused on the paralytic's physical needs, but Jesus essentially said, You need forgiveness more than you need physical healing. At that, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. Jesus knew what they were thinking and said, Why do you harbor evil thoughts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he then said to the paralytic, Rise, pick up your stretcher, and go home. When the crowd saw this, they were struck with awe. And that can be found in Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. Only God can forgive sins. By claiming authority to forgive sins, Jesus was again claiming to be God. In this situation, he backed up his claim by making the lame walk. Notice the reaction of the people. They were awestruck. When is the last time you were awestruck by Jesus? What is it? That we, why is it that we won't allow ourselves to be awestruck by Jesus anymore? Have our hearts become so hardened? Have we become too cynical? Have we become so familiar with the astonishing, astonishing acts of Jesus' life that we are no longer impressed? Jesus claimed to be the Lord of the Sabbath. The Sabbath is made for man, not man for the Sabbath. This is why the Son of Man is Lord even on the Sabbath. And that's found in Mark chapter 2, verses 27 through 28. In modern times, we may read this and miss, the, miss most of the meaning. But the Sabbath was the center of Jewish life and customs. It was sacred. Don't forget, keeping the Sabbath is the third commandment. Who is the author of the Ten Commandments? God. God is the Lord of the Sabbath. So by claiming authority over what was and was not permitted on the Sabbath, Jesus was proclaiming to be Jesus was claiming to be God. Yeah, that was pretty powerful, guys. Let's reread that. The Sab so this is in scripture and this is Jesus speaking and this is what Mark had written in chapter 2 verses 27 through 28. The Sabbath is made for man not man for the Sabbath. This is why the Son of Man is Lord, even on the Sabbath. All right, moving on. Jesus demonstrated he had power over death. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus, Lazarus had already been dead, had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Then Jesus approached the tomb and said, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out of the tomb. You'll find that in John chapter 11, verses 1 through 44. That's what it says, 1 through 44. 
Notice that Martha believed that Jesus had the power to prevent the death of her brother. When was the last time you were at a funeral? Imagine the scene. If someone had walked in, opened the coffin, and said to the dead person, Come out, and that dead person had gotten up and walked out. Imagine that there could be a complete pandemonium. Jesus wants your funeral to be a resurrection too. Power over death belongs to God. By demonstrating that he had power over death, Jesus was displaying his divinity. This was powerfully demonstrated when he raised Lazarus from the dead. Raising Lazarus was also a dramatic foreshadowing of the central event upon which all Christianity hinges, the resurrection. Okay, our point to ponder today is Jesus is speaking directly to you in the Gospels. Verse to live, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John chapter 14, verse 6. Question to consider. What's holding you back from believing in Jesus completely? Prayer. Lord Jesus, I trust in you. Thanks for joining me today, and um, I'll see you tomorrow.